Well, I've um, been talking with a chap at the church, he's a young man who was into all the violence and corruption and uh, was on a charge. Um, and uh, he'd been explaining how he'd become a Christian, you know, giving his testimony to the uh, four or five of us in the group. And, um, well, he'd um, been best friend of the pastor's son-in-law, who became son-in-law because, um, sorry, yeah, became son-in-law because, uh, in the consequence of uh, himself becoming a uh, Christian. Um, so a lot of his testimony was about his best friend. His best friend who had um, ultimately married the pastor's daughter. And uh, the son-in-law had, uh, they'd been driving and um, his life had been going to pieces and his mum who uh, was Christian had been praying that, um, you know, he'd reform. And uh, turns green. become Christian for real. And um, well, all sorts of miraculous things happened. In particular, he was out in the car, and his friend was with him, who was talking to me, telling me this, telling us this. And uh, the dashboard, had, um, from his point of view, not his friends. But the sign of one view had lit up and suddenly spoken to him in words that he had to basically put his life in order. I mean, he was flabbergasted. His friend didn't hear the words that God said to him. Um, but he certainly saw his reaction and the way he was behaving. And of course, they hadn't uh, in any way anticipated this. So absolutely, tremendously shocked the son-in-law son was. Excuse that traffic light turns green thing, that's because uh, I'm sitting by the lake and for some reason, every time someone goes past, the green of the grass changes or flickers, I think, and the camera registers traffic lights turn green. Ignore it. And um, then they thought, you know, that's just drive on and um, so he did go to turn the ignition key and again the dashboard just lit up to him and he got the same words or something equivalent and this happened three times in total so they got his girlfriend who in fact was the um, pastor's daughter who uh, I think also was, um, you know, far from the fold, so to speak, got her to drive. And she'd been driving about a hundred, few hundred yards, and the police pulled him over and uh, got her for, um, I think, drink driving. They were then, after the police had vanished, Persuaded by um, a chap who was talking to me, to us, to um, just edge forward. They got to the junction, and near the junction, they noticed this car crossed in front of them and backed up and then waited out of sight. This worried them. They weren't at all clear what was happening now. And well, really, the light turns green. that was about the um, gist of the uh, miraculous, so to speak. Son in law turned over a new leaf, taken under the wing of the pastor, I think even staying at the house, um, helped him in business and got him going, helped him in, I think they were installing sky receivers or something, sky television. And um, 
But in the end, married the daughter. And I gather the daughter um, was back on the straight and narrow as well. He continued to visit his friend. Um, I said, do you mean drugs and so on? Said, oh, no, 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 just getting, trying to persuade me to uh, be Christian, you know. And uh, it, it, light it, turns green. it wasn't for me. Well, after some considerable time, son-in-law started to go off the rails with the friend he was talking about and uh, was getting a lot of tickets for um, uh, using the mobile phone while driving and uh, was with the pastor one day and uh, I don't know, picked up the phone and uh, you know, policeman appears from nowhere and books him and uh, well, pastor knew what was happening in, in, in some general sense um, and I'm not sure whether God tells him or whether the pastor tells him, you know. Um, you, can't, you can't do this, you know. It's, it's bad news. And um, he doesn't heed it, apparently. And he's killed. Truck goes over the car. Possibly he was reaching down to get his phone at some point, hard to say. Wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Um, thrown from the car. Car goes over him. Another car, I think. And kills him. This is a frightening wake up call for the friend, of course. Uh, really is beginning to think this is all too much. He has a dream. And he dreams what would have happened when he was with the son-in-law, um, at the time of conversion, and they pulled back when they saw this car waiting in the, at the T-junction. It had backed from the T-junction and was sort of waiting, and they found the whole thing a bit unnerving. And in the dream, uh, Traffic light turns green. Truck jackknives and uh, crushes the car that they're in. They're both killed. So this is a prophetic warning dream from the point of view of chap giving his testimony and uh, well sought God for real. Interesting detail that since then, at some point, because um, he'd always had uh, irritable bowel syndromes, he'd got stomach pain. And he thought, now, thinking in spirit-type Pentecostal religious terms, that this is demonic. So he, he speaks to his stomach. He says, you go immediately or I'll fast. And the pain stopped immediately. This, of course, gave him extraordinary impact as regards the power that he's now in. The power that he now has. And um, he said, I fasted anyway. I fasted 10 days. Traffic light turns. Well, that's the sum of the miraculous things and a few other things that Pastor I did that he knew. And um, what do I make of it? Well, first of all, I believe the account. Uh, as given. That that's how it happened to them, that's what happened. Secondly, I don't believe that this in some sense validates 
their particular view of religion, their particular view of God. But I do think it validates the goodness of God in that, amazingly, he does do the miraculous. In some cases, presumably, we would say, when it's needed. I haven't uh, experienced quite that sort of extreme um, miraculous signs and wonders, if you like. I've certainly had what I took to be signs and wonders. Astonishing changes and happenings and coincidences and runs of things and just wonderful. But not that startling dramatic where, you know, words come to you out of the blue and you hear it literally and, you know, there's no way you're in tune and it just hits you and you can't deny it. It's a bit like Thomas. Not that I mean these were doubting people, these weren't in the least bit open to it. Well, at least um, the friend wasn't. I guess the son-in-law was in that he'd been going out with a girl who had been Christian and he would know something of her dad and being a pastor and, and all that. So he'd know, he'd know, hmm, he'd come close to religion. Not that he wanted it at all. Except his life was in chaos. And when your life's in chaos, we want an answer. And religion seems to offer an answer. And it is, it does. And it might not be the right religion in some kosher sense of, you know, it's the best religion with God or something. And that's not the point. It's the, it's the religion that God's going to use in your case. You could say he honours the religion you have. Or he could say, well, it's all his. He, he rules all things, he can use all things and does as required, as needed, to bless us and care for us. It's wonderfully inspiring when you hear a um, testimony like that. You've got this chap in front of you. Oh, incidentally, he got the pastor, gave the pastor a pair of scissors at some point, you know, in the past, and said, can you cut off my dreadlocks, which were right down, you know, falling on his chest, great long. Uh, and um, he's got, sh you know, a very normal haircut now. Um, um, and I mean, he's a wonderful chap. Just staggering. Uh, what a change, what a miracle, absolutely wonderful. Um, do I rush out now and cast out demons? No, I don't. Uh, do I believe the theology that uh, is being pushed by most of the Christian church? No, I don't think so. It has meaning in different ways, but not the way they think. I think it's much more spiritual. But that's not the point. What is the point is that God is and does and rescues. Wonderful. That's what's undeniable, to me anyway, regardless of your religion, I get the message, <laughs> I get the message that God can, that God is and can do, and sometimes does. It's a very short step then to assuming God is wonderful does all that is good, and uh, we can trust him. So the miraculous does launch you into conversion, 
does persuade. You know, was this man, did he sin or his parents that he should be born blind? And Jesus said, neither. But that the glory of God should be made manifest in him. And I take that to be, yeah, well, the glory of God is the miracle. You know, God is glorified. Goodness, amazing, astonishing. You know, he can now see. Jesus just says the word and it happens, you know, whatever it is, you know. And whether or not that's sufficient for the person who was blind and is now made, you know, able to see, whether it's sufficient to get them through and keep them through is another point. What matters is that it may do. It doesn't always seem to. Um, not only may do, but it profoundly affects the onlooker whose doubts are greatly removed by seeing the miraculous. And that's wonderful, isn't it? Because God could do the miraculous without onlookers knowing or seeing or knowing about it and could do the miraculous without even the individual realizing that it's a miracle that's happened to him. You know, it doesn't have to be a miracle that's recognized. For the miracle itself to happen, but for the conversion to happen. Now, even then, I mean, I become Christian. Was it through some vivid miracle like, like that of repentance and so on? No, it wasn't. I was just extremely happy, wanted to thank God, and thought this is strange. Never wanted to thank God before. Never wanted God to exist, apparently, before. Didn't realize I didn't want him to exist. And I changed. And I was high. Now, that's not quite the same extravagant miracle that you give in a testimony. But it's a miracle, and uh, it is a testimony. And uh, it does get through to people. Um, but you know, we can imagine a situation where you just start to believe in God very slowly. And perhaps some people are like that. The reality of God just gradually dawns on them. Perhaps even dawns on them from a child up because parents are into it, they're exposed to it. They just take it as given. Um, have they failed to make a decision? No, not at all. They've moved towards it. They, after all, they could have walked away. They could choose some other path if they wanted. But no, they choose to get further into it. More earnestly. Christian or godly or whatever their religion is. Incidentally, um, I was... I arrived to an, what might have been as short as an hour's um, prayer time in the morning between... 9 and 10, I arrived at nearly quarter to 10, and from half 9, well, yeah, from about 25 past 9 onwards, I was thinking, it's not going to be worth going to, it's too short, and I thought, no, I thought that when I went to the Salvation, once, Salvation Army once, a meeting that we had, and I met my last wife there, tremendous, wonderful blessing. And I wouldn't have met her. They only were visiting that one evening. It wouldn't have been the same otherwise. And, um, yeah. So, I was at the meeting this morning, even though I arrived, possibly with a quarter of an hour left. But I thought, no, it could well go on an extra half hour. I'd get three quarters of an hour anyway. And in fact, it went on another hour, didn't it? Hearing his testimony and, and so on, and worship. Lovely. What a blessing. 
So, remember even a small amount of blessing. In this case, it might be just the end of a meeting. It can be a tremendous blessing in your life. Don't underestimate the power of God and His love for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, and the detail I should add, um, where the son-in-law, pastor's son-in-law, actually got killed was only a few hundred yards from where they'd been when the police stopped him, the son-in-law, for uh, driving using the mobile phone. And only a few hundred yards from there um, was the place where subsequently, only a few days later, the son-in-law was killed. Pastor points out, no doubt to allay our concerns, that the first person on the scene at the accident, the death, was a Christian person, and the second, uh, and then came the ambulance. And that they had opportunity to talk to him before he died. So, from their point of view, you know, what pastor was saying, Jeff, sorry not to call anyone pastor are you, but um, you know what I mean, it's the easiest way of indicating who's who. So Jeff and all present are to take it that, um, uh, you know, in traditional Christian terms, the son in law still goes to heaven. It was okay at death, but you know, God hadn't abandoned the son-in-law. Well, in a sense, perhaps just took him before he went too far off the rails. I don't know if it's wishful thinking, but I'm anticipating that the chap who, the young man, the best friend who was giving the testimony this morning, I think he'll end up marrying the pastor's daughter as well. I don't know. I know nothing. I'm not. Don't think I've actually met the pastor's daughter. I know they have a kitty or two. I think it's one. Um, I know she has a kitty, one or two. And um, life is very serious, isn't it? Well, from my own point of view, I was prompted to uh, why don't I fast to get Christian back, or well, at least back to being fully Christian, fully godly, whatever. And I think that implies coming back to me. I'm not sure. But I find it slightly hard to uh, not see it as that. So I thought I should fast, and then I wasn't sure. After all, Jesus says, how can they fast when the bridegroom is still with them? And I don't feel I'm uh, in a situation where I haven't got God with me. Um, I trust that he's ruling anyway. And I don't think I need to prove to him that I'm in earnest. He knows. And I could certainly fast. I think I will anyway. I don't think it's crucial to God's decision. But it might be... But it might give me a few days in which to come to a clearer, better decision as to whether to continue the fast or not. So I thought, what criteria is there that would make me um, end the fast? Well, one is that God answers in the affirmative, and that I get some clear evidence that Christine 
has come back to God. Now the clearest evidence I can imagine is, you know, very weakly okay, she now attends church, say, and she's not attending at the minute, you see. I'm not sure if that's terribly persuasive, but it would be a pretty big coincidence to have happened while I'm on the fast. A more major one would be that she comes to me and she wants to reverse the divorce. She wants to um, be right with between us again, always. That would be incredibly persuasive to me that God had answered. Now, God may not need to answer in that miraculous way. He may simply persuade me during the fast to stop that I'm pushing his hand and there's no need to. Better to trust what he's doing you know that he might be going to do it, but not yet. Or that he isn't going to do it. And he knows it's best. After all, God allows, suffers if you like, puts up with whatever you like to think of it. Some people are having divorces and doesn't reverse it. I've had two divorces previously in the past, and God hasn't reversed it, not yet anyway. Um, first wife scarcely wants to talk to me at all, and the second wife, well, she's well married to a um, chap who clearly thinks the world of her. And, uh, And of course I married a third wife. Someone lovely came into my life. So, it's not that I need Christine to come back to me in the sense of, do I need it despite God knows what's better? For all concerned. And uh, I don't need her personally to come back to God now, anyway, regardless of coming back to me. I would strongly want her to come to God in the end. It doesn't have to be now. I don't have to die fasting to push God's hand so that he does it when it's not optimal except for the fact otherwise I'm going to die fasting. I don't want to put a gun to God's head in that way. That's not, that's not acceptable. So I am able, open rather, to being persuaded to finish the fast, not fast. But I don't think there'd be any harm at all in fasting for a few days. And I might be clearer as the days go on as to whether I should continue or stop. That might be because I receive a miracle. But it might be even if I don't receive a miracle. Love you, Lord God. I trust you. Thanks to your goodness, I trust you. Love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And incidentally, a minor miracle, you might think. Um, I'm here by the lake dictating this because I decided in the end not to drive to my friend Kavita's and spend the day there. Um, I checked the bank account and uh, it's a bit low. I don't want to use up and have to buy petrol before my next pension's received. 
So I thought, no, I don't have to do that. Just stay by the lake. Spend the day there. And if I hadn't, well, I probably wouldn't have made this recording. What cost would that have been to someone if I hadn't made this recording? You don't know, do you? Life is staggeringly wonderful the more you look for the presence of God in everything you do you need to be continually aware of his presence the fact that you don't manage it it's utterly irrelevant the more you can manage it the more you will be blessed go for it seek his presence You may be late, it's irrelevant. You may be late in coming to God, it's coming that counts. You may be late in putting your life in order, but you do it, that's what counts. Thank you, Heavenly Father.